as you will start uh, part one principles of managing uh, customer experience and relationship this is what part one will uh, is going to talk about couple of chapters in part one uh, the learning relationship learning relationship uh, this is a very interesting and important concept a learning relationship uh, and this is how it works i think it is good to read this and pay attention to this so please please uh, please read it and reflect on this it works like this if you are my customer and i get you to talk to me and i remember what you tell me then i get smarter and smarter about you i know something about you my comp competitors uh, don't know so i can do things for you my competitors cannot do because they do not know you as well as i do so the idea is talk to the the customer and then remember what they tell you and over a period of time from talking with them learning with them you get smarter and smarter uh, in knowing them what they really need what they desire what they want to achieve all of those things uh, before long you can get something from me you cannot get anywhere else for any price why because i have developed the learning relationship with you over a period of time i have learned your preferences uh, not just talk to you but remember what 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 you tell me uh, and so on and all the digital marketing uh, which you know you uh, you get emails in your um, in your in your email uh, you get messages in your email and so on uh, amazon is an interesting example to reflect on for this uh, they remember your uh, past behaviors your buying behaviors what did you buy based on what you buy and what you what you are looking for on their website they can many times give you uh, some uh, uh, some other products which uh, based on their uh, information you might like and and so on so all of that is a learning relationship uh, at the at the very least you had have to start all over somewhere else but starting over is more costly than staying with me so long as you like me and trust me to look out for your best interest so what they are saying is in 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 addition to what uh, you would do for example talking to your customers and remembering what you told me and then uh, making your uh, offers to them you want to ensure that they also like you you might the, the business might know what the customer wants but maybe the customer don't like them uh, maybe maybe you are doing business with ncb but do you like ncb maybe maybe you are a student of weekend school but do you like weekend school do you have, are you creating good memories or are you saying let me just get done with this yeah i am talking with you uh, i am trying to remember whatever examples you give me so i can use those examples in the conversations so you can relate with that and uh, we will do the course but do you like me also or you are just doing the course for some reason one reason or another the likability is there because i am giving you service you are my customer so i may be meeting the basic requirements the standards which you would want to maybe look into but that does not necessarily mean that just by giving those things you would also like me do you do you trust me do you trust me i'm giving this example because we are we are experiencing it so do you trust me do you think that i have your best interest uh, in my heart do you get that feeling or you think that boy man this this guy is going to fail us <laughs> what 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 are the sentiments you have now you know your sentiments yeah uh, you know them uh, you might not tell me uh, if they are bad sentiments, but you you know them. You know them, yeah. So what I'm trying to say that just by talking and remembering and doing the basics of the course requirement, there is a possibility that you might not still like the like the service provider. Maybe you like them, but maybe you don't trust them. 
and you don't think that they have your best interest in your heart. Uh, so this is what you want to achieve when you are providing quality service management, because please always remember whatever we are saying, we are not just saying it for the service management. We are talking about quality service management, superior, superior quality, of course, not not inferior. Yeah. So you need to think about it. So this paragraph, please pay attention to, to this. Uh, when people write these type of paragraphs, a lot of drafts are written before they finalize the paragraph. And if you look at it, they have really spent some time in, in a short six, seven lines. They are trying to convey a message on part one. Yeah. So please spend some time and think about think about these things and maybe make your own notes. And as you are going through uh, the book, uh, maybe highlight it or whatever you whatever your technique technique is. Chapter number one. Evolution of relationship with customers and strategic uh, customer experience. So essentially evolution. We are going to talk a little bit about that. If you don't have customers, you don't have a business. You have a hobby. Yeah, it's very interesting. Very interesting line. Uh, brands don't pay money. Uh, it can, now this can be this can be very controversial also, uh, but please reflect on this uh, brands do not pay money so when you are thinking about if you have a brand you have created a brand ncb or apple or amazon so the authors are saying those brands do not pay money uh, products don't products don't like for example iphone is not the thing which is going to uh, make you rich if you have apple yeah this is what is uh, please bear with me because this can be a little bit controversial. That is why I want to discuss all of this. Sales region don't. Thus, in many ways, a firm most valuable financial asset is its customer base. Uh, please spend some time on this. So it is not the brands, not the products, not the sales region, not the demographics. It is your customer at the end of the day is the customer which is going to uh, uh, of the most value to you. Uh, and if customer is more of most and this is where you know the companies uh, don't don't really reflect on this uh, because think about the example Lewis was giving about the food. Uh, they are doing good business that food chain is doing good business. They are making money. They are doing the sales. Uh, chicken after chicken people are buying and all of those things. So they are just looking at the numbers and they are satisfied. OK, we have done this much sales today. We have done this much sales on the weekend, this much sales in the month and so on. And they are satisfied and somewhere along the lines, they forget that it is not those products which are. Gaining them the financial whatever it is, the customer who is buying that product. So the customer satisfaction, uh, we need to really, really think about that. And this is where, you know, companies sometimes sometimes they think that brands are the, you know, and these can create. I'm spending some time on this because these can create some type of multiple choice questions for you in your exams and so on. You can read about the in the course outline, the uh, assessment uh, criteria and so on. So. That is why also it is very important to read the book and try to really understand what they are saying. New and unfolding techno technological capabilities to recognize, measure and manage relationships with each of those customers individually and to create and improve their experience with our companies. A forward thinking firm must focus on deliberately preserving and increasing the value of that customer base. Yeah. So Essentially, all the activities which you are doing is should be based on the customer base product and brand is important, but you need to uh, create and improve the experience. Uh, that is, I think uh, I would agree with how they are explaining, although it can be controversial for someone who has not who has not uh, studied a lot uh, in terms of uh, 
if you have not studied about customer relationship in the, in the theoretical framework before in other courses then it it can be a little bit confusing because you might think that brands don't pay money how is that it's the brand which is uh, giving money but please reflect on on these things um, customer strategy involvement of the en entire enterprise yeah this is extremely important extremely important involvement of entire enterprise all the stakeholders in the company uh, everyone has to take customer service seriously only then the service is going to get improved uh, one uh, one area which lacks the uh, which 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 is not satisfying the customer can have uh, far reaching consequences especially if some other company comes in and they are offering those things you might essentially what what the the basic idea here is that don't confuse your sales and how your business is performing with with the idea that you have the customer for life don't don't, don't get confused with that um, and this is what 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 happens essentially that companies get confused that they think that they are making good sales good gains products are going out brand is appreciated <laughs> so we are we are good to go but that is not how it is uh, technological advancements have enabled firms to manage customer relationship more efficiently and to create better customer service but technology has also empowered customers to inform themselves and on another and one another and to demand much more from the companies that do business with i think this is this is worth thinking about so yes companies can use technologies and improve the customer experience but then uh, customers are also using uh, technology for example when you are ordering something online uh, you can read the reviews which are posted by other customers about the company about the product about the service and if you don't like some product or service, you co you can uh, go on social media and say say something something negative about the company. How that can impact and affect that that business that is going to stay there forever, <laughs> for a good period of time. Uh, so this this is also very interesting time in in the sense that companies can use the technology to their advantage but it is i think it is more advantage for the customer because you go in the market you want to buy a laptop you go in sovereign and you say all right what is the price of this laptop and they say the price is 200000 jamaican dollar and maybe you would have paid that but you just run a google search that what is the real price of this this laptop overseas and you find out that it is maybe 60,000 Jamaican dollars or 70,000 Jamaican dollars. <laughs> and I'm not making up this example. I have experienced this myself. Uh, uh, and I'm sure you would, would have also in one form and another. So this much is the price difference. Uh, and when now you are more informed, now you can decide if you are willing to pay that much more for that product or service in some instances. Uh, or you are going to um, shop online and uh, see how you can bring it yourself or uh, some family member who lives overseas they can help you out there whatever your technique would be so these things were not there uh, before technology uh, go back uh, even even if you go back i think 10 years these things were not happening uh, did not have that type of information on the tip of our hands now we are more informed uh, in making these type of decisions uh, so think about this uh, how this can impact the uh, service management for the company uh, where uh, you as a business are charging more for a product which the customer sees online and finds out that it is not of that that much it's not that expensive you are charging way more so very interesting dynamics to, to
to think about. Um, please reflect uh, on these. Uh, brands add value through uh, being familiar, image, and uh, trust. Yeah. So, uh, and that is why they you would see repeat advertisement again and again because they want to stay in your eye. The more the product or service is familiar, the more uh, you kind of uh, unconsciously, unknowingly trust it because you have seen it before. Uh, that is why you know you you go uh, uh, you go overseas and you find your own community there and you are somehow trusting them more than the than the than the other people. Let's say you go to Canada and uh, you might want to trust uh, white Canadians more than uh, Jamaicans who live um, um, in Canada, something like that. And there is research research on that. Uh, people who who go overseas to study, uh, they would make friends from their own country, generally speaking. You must have, if you have experience of uh, going overseas and in, in a university, you would see that very quickly. And that is how friendships are at least started and, and so on. So being familiar is, is, a, is an interesting thing. Image, uh, trust. I think trust is something which is going to come again and again. Um, at a later stage, we would talk a little bit more about trust. Uh, primary enterprise uh, increase uh, brand uh, preference. The goal of primary enterprise increase brand preference and brand loyalty among customers. So not just uh, meet the basic needs of the customer, but try to make them loyal, uh, do things that even if a competition comes in and uh, even if a competition comes in, they are they are loyal, loyal to you. Um, can you think about some examples where, which are, do you have any product or service in Jamaica or overseas and you are loyal to that product or service? Can can anyone give any example of being loyal to that 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 business or service maybe there is a maybe there is a there is a restaurant and uh, you always go there although it is a little bit far away and it don't come in the way of your travel but you go out of your way and you go there every now and then because you are loyal to that restaurant or maybe you are loyal to a gas station and you think that you are loyal to that gas station. But are you really loyal to that gas station or your loyalty is because they give you better price on gas? Same way, are you really loyal to the restaurant or there is some other thing behind that? But please educate us. Is there any any product or service you, you think you are loyal to? Is any example coming to your mind? Um, you think you are loyal to loyalty. Why are you loyal to something? Are you guys in some type of relationship? Do you think you are loyal to the other person? Are you why are you loyal? Think or ask yourself. What is the what is the reason of your loyalty? Is the loyalty because yes, ladies, please go ahead. Well, I I there isn't a particular product or anything that I can really consider myself question. loyal to. However, yeah. I know for places that I revisit or I go to on any or any company that I use for anything, it isn't because of the company itself but because mm. of the people who I've right. dealt with for the company. So the customer yeah, yeah. service is high and the persons are 
friendly and relatable so it makes me comfortable going back to them knowing that they very actually care very interesting very beautiful very so, so what what are the things those those customer reps say to you which make you think that uh, you should keep on going there what what is the communication like if you can tell us a little bit uh, please ah uh, let's see are uh, there like for example i have a company that i usually like ship things with and yeah. um there is a particular representative who pretty much everyone who has interacted with her and has interactions with her it is always positive because she is friendly she is aware oh, wow. of everything that is happening like the first i remember the first time i went to the location um yes. and met her and she gave me a package by the second time i went to the location and i walked into the door she was like oh hi miss lewis um oh yes i have your packages i was right. very surprised that she remembered who i was and that she was speaking with me so on such a friendly term it was like we've been friends for years and i'm just coming there to visit my friend and chat and laugh and get a service at the same time so it was very comfortable very, very interesting very interesting very interesting thank you very much thank you very much for this very good contribution yeah so uh, think about these things uh, so you need to have these type of people in customer uh, customer service uh, that would automatically uh, improve the quality of the of the experience and uh, it is the although we are in technology uh, we use a lot of technology but still it is it is, it is the people who are uh, going to uh, impact these type of relationship one on one relationship knowing remembering the name knowing the person uh, how you greet them uh, it might it might be a small thing but it it makes or breaks the the overall deal uh, and uh, this somehow creates some type of affection with the with the company uh, with that experience uh, and uh, if you have that type of experience then if all other things are being equal then it is kind of harder for you to switch to the other company because you have made some type of bond with that company because of those people because of that interaction because of all of those things so it might not reach to the loyalty loyalty part but some type of relationship some type of um, some the feeling which you get when you go there uh, on the other hand it could be a company which is delivering your shipping package uh, properly and it is reaching you in the right uh, right form but when you go there uh, no one knows uh, your no one take an, any effort to memorize your name or they are not talking with you in a friendly way and you feel that it is kind of a robotic uh, thing which you went through so then you would you you would not you would not feel that type of warmth which is required in giving quality service management so please think about think about that uh, and on the same line they are talking about trustworthiness uh, that is that is very important uh, creating trustworthiness in the notes you will see uh, some papers uh, i think you should read them uh, because look at this one one you can look at this one here so they are referencing uh, some of the some of the some of the articles and uh, referencing as you would remember <laughs> from before covid times if you have written some reports for me i try to encourage you to find good references so these are very good references for example why strong customer uh, relationship trump uh, powerful uh brands uh, why that why that happens harvard business review very interesting article uh, 
So I have scanned through these articles. Uh, there are quite a few. If you are interested, you should find these articles and scan through them and increase your knowledge uh, on, on that. Creating a two-way brand, one that thrives on customer information and interaction. And maybe this is what uh, Lewis was maybe referring to, that customer information everyone would have. If, if she goes to some other shipping company or any other business, they would have uh, her information and they would know her name and whatever. But to convert that information into interaction, that is what uh, this business did uh, the example Lewis gave and that made her into a happy customer. So that is, I think, um, important point to note two way brand or branded relationship based on the ongoing dialogue between the enterprise and the customer. So it should so it's it's a it's an ongoing dialogue. So even when your customer is happy and satisfied, the communication should be ongoing you should always be looking out uh, what is it how you can help the customer a little bit more asking them how was your experience asking them what they could do differently are, are we meeting your needs or not all those type of things but what happens is that it is it can be very time consuming one and then it will be uh, costly also uh, so to cut the time factor to minimize the cost many times companies are you know they are okay with with giving uh, bad customer service and maybe the maybe the competition's customer service is also bad so they are not really have to fight anything for that because overall in the community in the in the sector overall in the country maybe the customer service is not really good so then the customer is also not expecting much and they are used to this type of behavior for one reason or another. For example, overall in, in Jamaica, if I ask you, what do you think the customer service is? Is it good? Is it very good? Is it bad? Is it poor? So we know what the answer would be. Yes. So uh, that also contributes to the overall situation uh, what customers say about them is more important than what the companies say about themselves yeah so what ncb is going to say about themselves is important but not as important as the as what uh, for example one of our friends mentioned mentioned that so that you need to think about that if you if you have this type of mindset then of course you are trying a little bit more to satisfy the the company remember the mission statement the vision statements yes those are important but what is more important and what is going to make or break the company in the long run at least in terms of services how the customers recall the interaction uh, company might think that they did a good job but what is the perception of the customer is more important sometimes how the customer is perceiving uh, that is more important so it is not yes it is it is good and it is okay that i am trying to go through the important pointers in the book but what is even more important in terms of service management is how do you perceive this activity are you enjoying it? Uh, are you liking it? Or you are getting depressed that, oh, I have to read the book now. Yes. So the perception is more important because think about it. Uh, if you don't like the, if you don't like the feeling of reading this long book, which I think most of us don't like, <laughs> then no matter what knowledge you are gaining from that, you will say, yes, I learned a few things here and there, but because you don't like the experience of reading the book, then overall it is a possibility that at the end of the course, you might say that you did not really enjoy reading the book, although you learned a couple of things by reading the book. Uh, 
so this is what happens uh, the company thinks that they are giving good product to the customer but what company thinks or what the lecturer thinks or what the university thinks is important but not as important as the as the customer experience which is you so what do you think about all the experience that that needs to be considered when you are making strategy of quality service quality service management uh, what customer wants that is more important than what the company want to give a company want to give something yes that is good and that is important for a set price but what customer really wants and to understand the customer it takes time effort and all those things just like lewis gave example what she really wants is not she, she would you she can get the shipping package from anyone but she likes it when she goes in and the customer app knows her and they can have a little chat and it's a friendly atmosphere and it is it is a business activity but because of the conversation it is not just the business activity yeah so she likes she likes that and most of us like it that way uh, yes we want to do business with the different with different companies but we want to enjoy some type of human interaction also so it it should not be just robotic those type of things i think you should should think about uh, how to how to reach that type of level uh, all these things which i am talking about they especially in jamaica dealing with local companies it sounds like a fairy tale world that how that is going to happen but it it can happen uh, it can definitely happen leadership that is very important leadership and the commitment of that leadership and then how they think thinking of that leadership the mindset and then their decision making capabilities these are some of the things which if if a company can work on these things which we are talking about uh, are possible increasing the value of customer base as we mentioned earlier in the discussion that it is not the brands it is not the products uh, it is the customers who are really uh, giving you the uh, the sales or the profits so increasing the value of the customer face that is i think Uh, something which you want to think about so acquire get the customer then retain them especially the prof the, the customers longer the customer stays the more profitable uh, the business would be so it is not good idea that the customers leave uh, and they just do one business they come to you they do the first business you deal them in a way that they want to come back again to you and then you have to keep on doing it you can't just think that okay all, now i can just relax because my customer is going to come back again and again automatically uh, and again let me remind you we are talking about quality service management not just regular service management and you would see that sometimes businesses just take it easy and they don't really work on uh, continuously retaining the customer and so on um, eliminate unprofitable customers uh, yes depending on your uh, business you can think about that and then grow upsell additional products in the solution you can upsell them you can cross sell them referrals uh and then you can reduce some of the cost for them for repeat business and so on so this is an interesting picture to review and reflect once you have uh, read the previous pages in detail of course line by line a uh, balance scorecard is very interesting uh, this is one of the reference uh, which they used in explaining i would like you to maybe look at balance scorecard and how it is it can be used in terms of measuring customer profitability um it's an interesting uh, read if you are interested uh, in a sense building the value of the customer base requires a business to treat to treat different customers differently i would like you to reflect on this 
treating different customers differently because uh, you know we, we are in the world where we are always talking about equality and everyone should be treated equal and all of us are equal and all of that and that is correct also uh, equality is is a good practice but it's a little bit controversial you can think the way you want to think i'm just sharing my thoughts on the topic everyone is equal but then everyone is not equal uh, and that is the same thing these authors are talking about uh, they are talking about treating different customers differently so you it's not a good practice to treat all the customers in the same way uh, as per the explanation of this book and i would also agree as I mentioned that everyone is equal, but everyone is not equal, but you cannot say it out loud uh, like that. Yes, I think Lewis wants to say something. Yes, please. I agree with that totally, sir, because I have a personal hands-on experience of that, where okay. in my job, well, at least in a former position where I was, and I was pretty hands-on as it relates to um, how I offered the service. I was in charge of like the meal plans for oh, yeah. um, for the organization. And in providing the service to each employee, they used to appreciate being updated as to what the, the status of their meal card was and whether or not we would get it soon or whether it be late or anything and yes. even approaching them outside of them coming to see me if i remember them and seeing them outside of my com them coming to my office i'd say to them hey i remember your card your card isn't here yet but i think we'll get it by next week or something Mm. I use that same thing that I do with everyone else and they appreciate it. One particular employee though, doing that with him, he considered it akin to harassment mm. and yeah. complained that <laughs> I was bothering him outside of him coming to see us. Yes, yes. Very interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. So whereas everyone else appreciated it, he considered yeah. it being bothered. Very interesting. Very interesting. Thanks very much for sharing that insight, Lewis. Very beautiful, beautifully explained. And that you can link it with the earlier portion, which I was I was talking about that. It is not what you are. You might be giving something of quality to the customer, but it is not just that. More important thing is that how that customer perceive what you are giving uh, to them. So in that line, um, I'm happy that I got some uh, example from you guys on this on this topic. So uh, please think about think about think about that. Some a lot of examples you are going to find uh, examples in the in these bullet points. A lot of examples are there. Airport example, other type of examples. So when you are uh, reading the book chapter, please pay attention. Uh, to the example here also some example of Salesforce very interesting company if you are not familiar with the company run a Google search on that and uh, know about know about the company they are always doing something uh, exciting overall not just in service management but overall as a as a business management student all of us should know these type of companies so very interesting company sure. uh, one example I would I have highlighted uh, must have liked it uh, more than the others, a customer service representative uh, representative sees a complaint a customer has made on a social channel and is able to view at the same time his purchasing history and order status. The service rep uses that information to reply to the complaint by the social by the same social channel. This is very interesting and powerful because companies have access to technology and uh, and so on so uh, if a company can do that i think that is a good example to uh, reflect reflect on um, this is another example i liked it because of the factor of timing instead of mailing out the same offer to everyone a company waits for specific trigger behavior 
it can be any trigger behavior it can be the birthdays it can be the valentine's days it can be new year based on your past history from a customer and increase response rates 25 fold 25 fold yeah that's that's quite a uh, quite a high high number so so in this in this what excited me was the timing you have to time the time your offer and it should be specific to the needs of the customer and so on if you can manage that you can help you increase the customer and and we have experiences these type of sales pitches which come in a in a special uh, time for example in summer i would use to travel uh, to uh, other countries uh, i did it i think two years uh, before covid uh, but uh, because of covid we are not traveling anymore but because i used a certain airlines and so on they now is the summer time approaching and they are like this is a trigger behavior they are sending me the offers and very interesting offers because i was looking at the offer the one offer was very interesting that uh, they said that uh, uh, if you pay uh, 15 percent one five uh, 15 percent more you can get the uh, seat be beside your seat and if you pay uh, 10 percent more on that you can get the third seat beside your seat also and so on so uh, that really made me laugh because that's interesting because not many people are traveling and they have done the done their research and they know that the air, 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 aeroplane is going to go empty <laughs> or very very few people would be sitting and uh to certain destinations and they are trying to maximize their sales and they are saying oh you can buy the next seat by paying this much more and you can buy the next seat uh, paying this much more so uh, so how they are doing it they are it's a trigger be trigger kind of a trigger behavior based on my history they are seeing that in summer this person might want to fly to these countries and they are giving their um, they are making their pitch and uh, and so on uh, always uh, always look at these references uh, throughout the book uh, please pay attention to them uh, because they are not referencing just any person xyz uh, top people in the field they are being referenced in the book uh ranjay gulati for example uh, you can run a google search on the person and read what type of things uh, he's writing about uh, that is that is important i think uh, four p's of marketing you might have looked at them in your basic uh, marketing course but even if you have not four p's product price promotional activity and place you might want to keep it in your in your head somewhere and then four c's customer value lower cost better convenience and better communication and if you look at you know the examples you guys have been giving you would appreciate that these are things you are talking about you are talking about cost you are talking about convenience you are talking about communication you are talking about overall value so these are four p's four c's and you should uh, read how they have explained it in the book and even outside of that you should reflect on that and most important thing i i think is that uh, reflecting on your own experiences what you have faced in terms of customer service i think that is that is i think because you would relate more with uh, you have to read the book but if you are reflecting on your own examples i think that is that is uh, that would be i think uh, making more impact always think what service uh, you like why you like it when you don't like some service uh, reflect on it uh, why you are not liking it how they can improve the service what what are the simple basic things which they can do and they can improve the service at your work for example you must be giving different type of services and you know your work look at look at it from that perspective that what are some of the uh, 
uh, least costly things maybe you are it, it is not costing much at all what are the things which can be done uh, at the least cost using least cost method uh, no cost maybe no cost method and uh, well there is always some type of cost tangible or intangible so let me backtrack least cost uh, to your business uh, and how it can be improved always have that observation wherever you are going you are going for grocery you are going for whatever and you are on the road everything is about service whatever someone is giving some type of service all the time whatever you are wherever you would look either you will be giving some service to someone else or someone is giving you some service even when you are alone watching uh, netflix on <laughs> on the um, using inter internet or whatever that is a service uh, and how they give you the based on what you have watched and how long you have watched that particular show or movie they recommend you more based on your uh, your uh, your preferences and what is that yeah think about that i was reading an article uh, not for this course uh, just general reading that um, netflix uses artificial intelligence algorithms uh, to uh, uh, to tell the clients uh, what they should be uh, watching uh, i don't really remember but i just ran a google search okay all right we found it how netflix uses ai for better content recommendation so if your content recommendation is uh, is good then your uh, customer would be would be satisfied so netflix is using 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 that yes uh, so you can read about about these things uh, i'm interested in artificial intelligence and modern technologies i think i was reading for for that uh, but anyways so these things uh, so yes what i was saying is that look around uh, look around and service whatever always have an eye what service is being provided a look at the body language of different people involved even when you when, when when they are not necessarily dealing with you directly always ask yourself what are they doing wrong and within the course of 2 3 4 weeks of this type of observation and if you are taking notes you will find that the same type of recurring re, recurring uh, re, uh, the things are uh, happening again and Uh, again those same type of challenges same type of situations are coming again be it communication being it not being empathy being it not uh, putting your place in the shoes of customer simple things and i think that activity you should you should do as and in your in your spare time you are looking at uh, um, the book chapters and so on this is interesting picture to reflect on enterprise strategy map yeah so it has for example it has two uh, areas to reflect on one is uh, if you look at y axis interacting interacting so how much is the is the interaction with the customer with the consumer so look at the top ability to interact with customer individually so you are individual individually crafted uh, like in the case of the example levis came when she goes Uh, to pick up her her delivery or whatever uh, she is greeted by the name and the customer rep remembers her and the customer rep remembers the conversation which they had last time and she can he or she can pick up from that conversation so maybe leave is tell 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 her something in the last conversation that okay i am i am doing a course in quality service management and the customer rep remembers it, remembers it and she says okay what 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 are the things you are talking about in that course which you were talking about last time we met so this kind of gives that feeling that uh, you remember what what you said to the customer rep it's so ability to interact with customers individually yeah high on x axis 
on on the uh, on sorry on y axis and on x axis you are looking at tailoring so look at the far uh, far far end on x axis tailored products tailored tailored to the needs of the of the of the of the customer so now you can you can look at where you fall so uh, if it if you are high in tailoring and high in interaction this here you will fall in the fourth quadrant one to one learning relationship and do you guys remember we spoke this is how this part started part one uh, this is how that paragraph which i was telling you that they must have taken a lot of time to write that para paragraph that was about learning relationship so the customer is telling you something and you remember that and then you act on that and you try, try to build a trust on that and then the repeat business and you just don't close your eyes after that you keep on learning more and more and more about the customer and a time comes very soon where the customer is unable to move to your competition because you know so much about the customer now and you are satisfying customer in a way that for the competition to satisfy the customer in that way is going to take months if not years because of the knowledge which the business has gained uh, from that customer so for example um, this example this example which uh, lewis uh, dear Lewis uh, gave of going to that uh, delivery place and that girl is there, the boy is there and they know the name and everything and whatever. Uh, I, I would say they should do a little bit more than because they already know the name and now they remember the face and everything. So every time uh, our friend goes to that place they should ask her some type of question and then take the answer and without miss lewis really knowing it they can just put in it so for example are you uh, what what is your favorite uh, what products you are uh, you are getting in the shipment uh, what is your what is the best price you are willing to pay for for these type of products uh, any other products which you are seeing but although this is not their direct business they are just doing the shipment maybe but that type of information they can casually take over a period of time so and then they should search for those type of things for miss lewis and then they can give that offering to that 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 uh, that customer which is miss lewis in this case and then they can grow their their business from just a shipping company to to something else and then they would diversify the portfolio of the products and this is how businesses grow if you think about it amazon is very famous we all know that amazon is like you know they are the the um, he is one of the one of the richest guy i think uh, in the in the world jeff bezos i don't think he is the richest guy now because i think uh, tesla's guy has uh, has taken over uh, i think he is the richest guy but uh, he is somewhere on the top definitely on table jeff bezos and how did they uh, made that empire it is built on see how how amazon is going into different business one after another and all they have is the customers and all they have is the customer information and they are just adding to that starting from the book business and now they are like they are just really spreading into various various different type of business uh, this is what they have been doing so from the uh, from the customer they would ask them some questions what are you looking for what would you need what is the price you are willing to give for that and then add that to their offering and then add more for that customer and add more and add more and and see where they have they have reached uh, uh, 
but again a different type of mindset would be required a growth mindset would be would be required from the workers from the leadership and so on if you don't have that mindset then of course this is and and uh, this is just a theoretical everything is theoretical then the same way you can look at database marketing mass ma mass marketing niche marketing you must have heard these terminologies but please pay attention to these uh, quadrants uh, to move up in the in the in the quadrant recognize individual customer names and addresses just like in the example miss lewis gave to move to the right increase its production and logistics flexibility that is what i was talking about when i was saying that uh, gain more information from the customer and then increase your flexibility in terms of offerings product offerings or diversification of portfolio or logistics uh, flexibility whatever you want to call it uh, customizing and delivering individual products for individual customers uh, this is uh, what uh, maybe uh, businesses there is a lot of growth if uh, businesses can do that of course it is time consuming to really know the individual customer and then perform on that but it is worth the time and effort Philip Kotler, we mentioned uh, uh, honorable professor. He wrote the foreword. Kotler on marketing, these type of uh, readings, I think you should uh, you should do uh, to increase your knowledge on the on the things which we are talking about. Here is an example. Toyota can try to sell as many uh, customer. This is the example for for this. There are many other examples, but I just I'm just reflecting on one. This is it, customizing and delivering individual products for individual customer, yes? Toyotas can try to sell as many cameras as possible for any price to anyone who will buy. And that is what they are maybe doing. Or what they can do is by knowing Mrs. Smith better, make sure all the cars in Mrs. Smith garage are Toyota brands, including the used car she buys for her teenage son. And that Mrs. Smith uses Toyota financing and gets her service uh, maintenance and repairs at Toyota dealership throughout her driving lifetime. Yes. So you might want to uh, think about it. Yes. Any examples which are coming in your mind based on what we have try to talk about so far any examples any thoughts this is quite interesting example if you reflect on this yeah even in used cars so that is how toyota should be thinking about and toyota is just one example they are trying to talk about here any business not just uh, not just selling what they have but which is cameras in this case but really understanding what uh, Mrs. Smith really wants and then delivering on that. This is very uh, interesting uh, picture to look at. Objective of customer centricity. Yeah. So on the x-axis, you are looking at customers reached. How many customers are reached? Uh, and by reached, you are thinking about maximizing the value created by each product. On the y-axis, you are looking at customer needs. What are the need, specific needs of X customer? And for that, you are looking at maximizing the value created by each customer. And from all of this, you would try to craft your uh, strategy, whatever it is. So most of the time, what is happening is customer reached. Uh, businesses are looking at this x-axis. Uh, 
a customer how many customers are in reach how many business each customer is giving and so on but they can really grow their business by many folds if they can look at individual customer needs and then try to fulfill those individual customer needs then just by giving them whatever product they have in offering yeah that is very interesting concept to um, think about i enjoyed this article uh, you might want to read this pricing to create shared values uh, pricing again is a uh, very interesting uh, topic in marketing course you generally look at pricing also in finance course you can look at pricing of different products uh, but it is good to have that understanding as you read uh, they have referenced uh, the book up here number 7 you can look at this and then maybe read the read the article in detail for many articles they have given you the links but uh, just to let you know that uh, many articles are available by uh, uv links the databases which are available on the library website uh, please learn to use them and uh, look into that um, essentially what you are doing is making it more convenient for the customer uh, different strategies you can use these are two interesting examples you must be familiar with with these ones amazon's one click ordering process so what it is essentially is that in your initial orders uh, you have to put in all the information and then you can save it and after that uh, it is just one click uh, amazon system remembers you and you just one click and you have bought the product and it will be shipped and and so on um online banking rather than a uh, bank teller uh, this book is definitely written before covid times but uh this is essentially what uh, what one of our friends uh, was talking about uh, when she gave example of ncb uh, so you should think about that uh, i find this concept very interesting and that is why i highlighted it uh, customer touch points uh, everywhere the company touches the customer and vice versa those are the customer touch points uh, so it can be a complain it can be whatever it is maybe the customer is angry and he is contacting you whatever it is that is a touch point and that touch point is uh, an opportunity uh, for you to improve relationship no matter even if the customer is complaining because think about it if the customer is complaining and you deal with it in a proper way uh, to make the customer happy now you have converted that angry a customer to a to some someone who is now happy with the company so it is how you react with that situation with that touch point i think that is something important to uh, reflect reflect on and many times the touch points are the people who are the front desk the customer reps many times they are not uh, very uh, not highly qualified they are they have the basic skills uh, and many times they don't want to be there <laughs> where they are as uh, levis mentioned that people people are not people are just not happy being there in her example which she gave uh, so think about that your customer touch points are these people who don't want to be in that job these people who who are not passionate about the job then of course if that is the case then uh, it is definitely going to um, not help your uh, not help you in improving uh the the service uh technology empowers uh enterprises and their customer contact personal marketing and sales function and managers by equipping them with substantially more intelligence about their customer so it is not just the uh, just the service side 
are talking about marketing they are talking about sales function uh, more and more so it, it is essentially you would that is why they said that uh, crm is a philosophy uh, customer relationship management although it is uh, it is a software but uh, the way the leader is going to think and react to different situations that is going to uh, make the make the most out of the situation yeah so uh, so here the highlighting point is that marketing sales function other other areas in the business um, they are also going to get benefit from that customer contact uh, personal customer uh, this terminology customer touch points yeah very interesting uh, uh, concept and they are highlighting uh, the point i have mentioned it earlier but you can look at it again cannot depend on technology alone to do the job requires committed leadership from the upper management of the enterprise and wholehearted participation throughout the organization as well uh, so i want to reiterate this point wholehearted and it is literally wholehearted if it is not if the if the people service people are not wholeheartedly involved with the with the job then then these issues are going to come think about all the examples our friends have given so far in the in the in uh, in today's uh, conversation or lecture if you want to call it uh, those problems were there because uh, people were not wholeheartedly involved if they were involved wholeheartedly then those issues would not have come so those are the thing you want to think about the firms that are best at building customer value are not the ones that ask how can we use new technologies to get our customers to buy more although you want your customers to buy more but this is not what they ask instead they are the companies that ask how can we use new technologies to deliver more value to our customers more value to our customers that is where uh, companies should focus in terms of improving service quality management what what is the more value they can offer what is what is the more uh, they can give uh, instead of just giving the minimum and just meeting the standard yes uh, but based on the examples you guys shared a customer it is not difficult to uh, satisfy a regular normal customer because they are they are okay if they are meeting the basic requirements they are satisfied uh, but the problem is that even meeting those basic requirements is kind of hard for companies for these obvious reasons which stood out from uh, five six examples you guys gave establish trustable relationship with customers on an individual basis basis then use the information gathered to treat different customers differently and increase the value of each one to the firm yeah we have made these pointers uh, but it is good to re reflect on them overarching theme of such an enterprise is that the customer is the most valuable asset the company has that is why the primary goal are to get keep and grow profitable customers not all customers profitable customers so very nicely they have written these two lines please reflect on these lines and as you are reflecting on these um, these highlighted section realign your thinking because maybe before uh, thinking about these things you are thinking about it in a in a in a different way for example you may be were thinking that it is the brands which bring the 
money to the company maybe you are thinking it is the products which bring money to the company yes they do but if you look deep it is the customers who bring uh, money or value to the uh, to the company you want to do things to satisfy those customers and not just satisfy the customers you want to exceed sometimes sometimes not all the times exceed their expectations by doing something different and when you will do that they will you will you will be able to print your name in their memories because you did something differently and just by doing that it is possible that they might never forget you for the rest of the life they are going to remember you and uh, see so many people uh, across our paths do we remember everyone uh, how many people you have seen in your in your secondary school and primary school and uh, cape time and cxc time and uh, in different jobs and whatever now, do you remember all of them do you remember do you remember for example lecturers do you remember all of your lecturers who have <laughs> crossed your path that's not possible you don't remember all of them they are but i'm sure you do remember a couple of them why do you remember them what was the reason uh, there has to be some reason why you they must be doing something differently or they were able to do something beyond what you are used to or something yeah? so that is why you remember them. will you forget them no you're not going to forget them you they are in your memory for the rest of your your life uh, so you you remember either you remember good experience or you remember bad experience the mediocre experience <laughs> is kind of goes away so either you are going to remember good lectures or you going to remember the bad ones the mediocre ones are going to come here and there yes you remember them but same thing is with the product and services if you want your your customer to remember remember you you have to uh, create um, more than a satisfying product and on the same on the same scale if you if you have created some service and the customer is not happy don't it, it, i don't think there is anything to really worry about because especially if they have told you that they are unhappy with the service there is nothing to worry about as long as you can do some type of compensation you can do some type of improvement in your behavior because they already remember you they are going to remember you as someone who gave bad service now if you are by doing some basic thing maybe by improving your communication by improving your strategy or doing the basic things it is you can turn them into someone who says all right they made a mistake but they uh, they very quickly uh, resolve the issues because you and me understand that mistakes are going to happen and uh, companies which provide some type of service they are also human beings uh, they make if if a mistake is not intentional and it was just made and they just uh, as they know about the mistake they work on it and they improve the service uh, people are willing to forgive unless it is again and again they are going to make the mistake and they are not taking seriously so in either case uh, uh, it can work for you and they remember you that you did something bad bad service but then they are they will remember it in a good way because you would recreate the experience for them you will compensate them and then you will come you will try at least try to come in their good books uh, so maybe those were some thoughts which are coming in my in my mind um, 
these things who is a customer and what not you might want to read that uh, a little bit in detail do you want to keep your customers forever this is a very interesting article published in harvard business review run a google search try to find it uh, should be available uh, through databases uv databases uh, how to think about customer experience what you intend to provide a customer is not nearly as important as how the customer perceives what you provide yeah think about it please we have mentioned it a while ago also and then they are trying to discuss it uh, you can contract out the task but not the responsibility yeah so you are a service provider uh, you have a company you uh, and you are providing some services in the in the company to the customer and it is possible that you uh, hire someone outside and uh, you give them the contract to give those services uh, uh, yes you have uh, contracted the services but remember that it is your responsibility at the end of the day and you can't just say that oh i was not responsible for this we have contracted uh, it to another firm yes it is correct that you have contracted it to the other firm but still if you want to give quality service then you should think that it is your responsibility still although you have contracted when you because it is all about mindset when you start thinking that it is your responsibility still then you are always on the lookout you are always thinking um, on these lines and you are always trying to contact with the contractor and asking them and seeing if everything is going fine or so on because you have taken the responsibility uh, responsibility is a very beautiful word uh, these examples which you guys were giving i'm just reflecting on them and uh, maybe we can say that uh, those customer reps especially the ones which uh, which were not good and they did not satisfy uh, they lacked uh, responsibility uh, they just felt that they are not responsible although they were responsible but they were not thinking in a responsible way their action was not uh, showing that so responsibility like for example learning learning yeah you you come to university of the west indies you you have enrolled in the weekend school and you have busy life and you have work and you have other things family and other obligations but you are keeping your saturdays free and you are attending online and you are doing what you can do so is that enough you might think oh yes i have enrolled in the program and i will just get the degree <laughs> uh, by just looking at the basics for every course and uh, just you know memorizing them the night before and in the exam i will just vomit if i can say everything whatever is coming in my mind i will just put that on a piece of paper and hope that i will pass yes you will pass but is that learning did we take the responsibility of of the learning that is that is on on you also so just by being responsible as a as a participant of this course if you just become responsible you feel you don't feel don't feel that university of the west indies is responsible for your learning don't even even feel that the facilitator or the person who is running the course they are responsible for your learning don't feel that don't depend on what is being posted online uh, you just feel that you are responsible for your learning so this course quality service management if you get if you get that type of feeling of responsibility that okay i need to learn about quality service management i need to increase my knowledge on this not just for the exam for my life i want 
so if you ha would have that responsibility whole experience will change uh, yes uh, many times what happens is that we outsource the activities and then we uh, we just contract it to other people and then we just say all right we close our eyes on that so for example you have contracted your learning to me you have contracted it to me uh, and if you don't take active participation in that then maybe you are not getting the most from this service because see you contracted it to me and i have read a couple of books on uh, on this quality service management which i had not done before and i am reading this book now and i will read it cover to cover line by line and what will happen and i will share my thoughts with you what is happening i am increasing my knowledge on the contract but if you don't read what i am reading then you might get a couple of things here and there from uh, what i am saying and what you are reflecting on but there is no substitute of there is no shortcut uh, like if I'm giving you the summary of the book, there is no shortcut. Yes, you will learn, but there are many examples uh, in the book, uh, which if you will read in detail, your knowledge will increase. So what I'm trying to say, you have contracted it to me or weekend school that they should teach you quality service management. And yes, I'm going to do my best uh, to do whatever I can, but you should not be dependent on on that if you take the responsibility in your hand then you will be able to give me feedback that okay maybe you should touch that area or maybe in the conversation it will come or maybe in your examples it will come or maybe you will fill in the gaps where i miss something and so on same thing is with the in the real life in the service management let's say that the organization uh, lack few things here and there but the person they have in the as the service rep he he or she takes responsibility in guiding the customer so although the policies are not there or there are different type of policies there but looking at the situation the customer rep goes beyond the call of duty and do the thing whatever is required uh, They were not required to do that thing, but they did it. Uh, that type of interaction. Same thing for the for the customer. Like for example, customers give feedback. So that feedback from that feedback, uh, they can uh, create some type of responsibility factor for the for the organization. Yes. So, but don't worry about it too much. Uh, you just if something you don't agree with, it is just because you have not started reading the book chapters. So it is best that you start early before I start talking about things in chapter four, five, six, seven. As a matter of fact, you should be reading faster than I am reading. So you are a little bit ahead, at least in this book with me. So you know what is what is happening and so on. But build your own pace and no, no, uh, no pressure. Customer becomes more loyal to the enterprise because it is simply in the customer's own interest to do, do so. It is most worthwhile for the customer to remain loyal uh, than to switch. And this is what you want to create. You want to create a, an, an environment for the customer that uh, he, he has told uh, so much about himself, his preferences to the company and company satisfying that customer in a way that the customer understands that if I will go to some other company, they won't be able to do this, uh, serve me in this way right away. It will take uh, time because there is it. Learning takes time. Uh, it does not happen just like that. Uh, and different people learn in different ways. Different people learn. Some people learn by listening. Other people learn by reading. Other people learn by experience. They will read everything and you know all the theory but 
they don't demonstrate in their actions because they did not have had the real world practical experience and so on yeah so you would want to switching cost they are talking about you want to pay some attention uh, to that please uh, two ideas they are talking about here the customer learns more about his own preferences from each experiences very interesting and the enterprise learns more about its own strengths and weaknesses from each interaction and from the customer feedback and this is what i was talking about a while ago, ago customer feedback and and so on customers whether they are consumers or other enterprises do not want more choices this is again something you want to reflect on customers simply want exactly what they want when where and how they want it this is something which you would want to uh, really take time to reflect on because general understanding is that maybe the customer uh, wants uh, a lot of uh, choices uh, but that is not what the customer really want you might want to go in a shop where all different type of clothes are there and you might feel good when to when you go in a shop where there is a lot of variety so you can choose and select what you want but if you are given a choice where you can just get exactly what you want and don't have to waste time going up and down and you would prefer that a simple example of that would be let's take some very simple example um, like i go to um, these gas stations um, to buy let's say um, biscuit cookies biscuits a snacks those type of things and i go in the aisle and if i want chips i see 50 different type of chips there and now i am looking at those chips and trying to think which one i want and i like this one or i like that one and i'm sure it has happened with you also you go to buy something and there are so many choices out there and you say which one I should get and you have to take a moment same thing with the drinks unless you have made up your mind before coming in the shop and you know okay I need this you are you are clear about that your purpose is clear about that and then you go in and you get it that is different but outside of that uh, having too many too many choices that can that can create uh, some type of uh, some type of problems and uh, for example something is coming in my mind let me find it for you yeah paradox of choice so you should read about this what is the paradox of of choice and this is the author Barry uh, very well known you should read about him also Barry yeah and maybe you know go on youtube and search for him yeah what he is saying about the choices yeah the paradox of choice you should watch this clip why not yeah very interesting talks here ted talks are here should should look into look into this when you have time anyways um, where was I? They do not want necessarily more choices. It's not necessary. Uh, the customer wants exactly what, what they are looking for at that time in that space, how they want it. If you can give that, customer is, generally speaking, customer is, is fine. Okay, let's see what else uh, is there which I want to maybe highlight. Some journals in the in the referencing section, as I have mentioned earlier, there are very nice journals also. Journal of this is a journal. This is MIT Sloan Management Review, just like Harvard Business Review. This is a very good uh, publication, and all these are available to you through uh, UV databases. You don't have to buy or anything. Just go in UV databases and search for these. European Journal of of Marketing and uh, and so on. Yeah. 
New York Times. You should read about these. Uh, should read, uh, develop some. What I'm trying to say, develop some, develop uh, some habit of reading that is going to help you. Uh, just like I did not really plan to talk about paradox of choice, but I saw that underlined and it came to my mind that that was very interesting talk I, I heard and concept. So I quickly share it with you. So if you are, if you need to be well read, uh, so read around uh, the topics and then try to find connections. That will really help you to go deep down uh, into improving uh, service, uh, uh, quality service. Uh, management and and any any other thing with whatever you are doing not just not just service management uh, this is very interesting example royal bank of canada's 16 million loyal customers so a while ago i asked you guys that uh, are you loyal to loyal customer of any business and so on and uh, we did not have an example for that and i understand it can be hard to uh, be a loyal customer of of a company especially locally locally speaking but anyways this is this is a good example 16 million loyal customers so very interesting please read it in your own time very interesting example rbc royal bank of canada royal bank of canada is functional in uh, in jamaica um, are they here functional or or no why i am thinking that i saw them somewhere i don't know maybe i am confused and then there are other and when you will read this case you will find that they they were able to increase their growth i think by 75 percent and there are other examples like swiss bank dutch bank wells fargo offer read about these examples as far back as the 1990s rbc developed superior computing and database power along with sophisticated statistical programs to analyze customer information and test specific actions it should take with specific customers yeah a sophisticated statistical programs and you would recall that uh, when i was starting out the conversation on this book and i was going through the just the names of the chapter at the beginning of the book i mentioned uh, you guys analytics analytics data that is what sophisticated statistical programs that is very important to understand the customers uh, dig deep into what customer really want when do they want because think about it why is amazon uh, so rich, such a big company, why? Because they have been collecting the data of their customers and then interacting with the customers individually, meeting their needs individually and so on. McKinsey and Company, a very interesting uh, resource, uh, they publish on various topics i encourage you to go on their website www.mckinsey.com and uh, read around various things which various reports which they which they publish uh, from time and uh, and again and don't get worried about these type of numbers and so on uh, all it is saying is profit one customers generate over time what they are trying to say is that year one year two year three year four year five no matter which industry you are looking at you will see that the profit is increasing as a customer is staying for with you for a longer duration of time so for example auto servicing if the customer stays with you first year it is 25 dollars second year increase 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 and that is for the same industry so essentially, no matter what the industry, the longer an enterprise keeps a customer, the more value that customer can generate for the stakeholders. That is essentially what they are saying. This is interesting. On average, 
US corporations tend to lose half their customers in in five years, half their employees in four and half their investors in less than one year. And very interesting. A customer service is it needs a lot of work. Uh, it is difficult to uh, get uh, new customers all the time. Best thing is that you get some customer and then you retain them. Uh, you should customers should only leave you when if you really don't want to serve that customer and that is not good for your business. Otherwise, it is always good to retain the customers. Enterprises that concentrate on finding and keeping good customers, productive employees and supportive investors continue to generate superior results. For this reason, the primary responsibility for customer re retention or defection lies in the chief executive office. Yeah. So when your frontline officer customer rep is dealing with the customer in a good way, what they are doing is they are they are putting some efforts which are helping in retaining the customer. Yeah. So they are in other way. They are helping the CEO without knowing they don't really know but just just by that example which Lewis came uh, Lewis uh, gave about the, the the shipping place where she go and the customer rep greets her with the name and everything so she is doing the job of the CEO when she is doing some things which are helping uh, Lewis to stay with that business retaining customer retention yeah you need to think about that here they have made some uh, comments as i was reading and this line i highlighted for you guys to reflect on some some may question the statement customers are a company's only source of revenue yeah uh, because you might think that there are other revenues uh, of the uh, which help the business uh, but if you look deep uh, you would find that if there is no customer there is no benefit to the to the business business cannot grow even they might have other uh, other practices or uh, methods of generating money but no matter how you want to look at the customer is the only source of revenue and then they explain you can read this in detail by definition and so on but you would have to i i really think that the best thing would be that you read wide around these areas and if if you are reading and you don't understand anything or you don't agree with something or something is confusing just don't let that stop you read what I find is that you conti continue your reading and you would find that something is talked in Japan and you would find that later down you will find that they explain it in a different way and then you get it. Uh, but don't expect yourself to get everything the book is saying in one go. Many times you have to reread the concepts and then you have to think about them. And then you have to think about your own experiences and then reread it a couple of times to really understand what what they are saying that can happen sometimes. So just by reading one time, don't expect yourself unless you have read a couple of books on the topic. Don't expect yourself that everything the authors are saying is going to make sense with you or you will agree with them. And it is perfectly fine to not this to dis disagree with what the authors are saying or what I am saying that is perfectly fine. Nothing is wrong in that. As long as you have some uh, some some something to support. Um, they defined customer satisfaction as measuring the difference between what the customer expects to get and what he perceives he gets. Yeah, so it has nothing to do with the real product per se. Very interesting. One is what the customer expect to get. Expect to get what the customer expect to get. This is the expectation. 
and then when he gets it what he perceives he gets what is his perception in his perception what he thinks what he got that is what it is so it is not the real thing it is what the it is the it is the competition between the you are you are competing between the expectations of the customer and the perceptions of the customer not the real product which you are offering so i am delivering i am uh, i am giving you this service and you are enjoying my services so what am i dealing with one is your expectation from this course what you will learn how your experience would be and then once you get whatever i am delivering what you how you perceive that so it is it is it is not it is not the real thing it is the expectation it is not the real learning it is the expectation which you had before coming to this room and how you will perceive it going out of this room or how you are perceiving it right now customer sacrifice which is the difference between what the customer wants exactly and what the customer settles for very interesting concept these things and these are coming from uh, these readings you can read these readings in detail if you are interesting satisfaction sacrifice and surprise the element of surprise that is very interesting surprise for now it is enough to know that the customer satisfaction issue is controversial maybe even problematic customer satisfaction how to satisfy the consumer read in detail about about this retaining customers is more beneficial to the enterprise for another reason acquiring new customer is costly there are many reason one of the reasons is that getting new customers is is kind of costly and they have given some numbers and they have tried to give some examples why they think and why it is true that getting new customer is costly so it is it is better that you get some customer and that customer do repeat business with you and you are able to retain the customer for a longer period of time just like i mentioned mckinsey website this is again very useful uh, website boston consulting group uh, you can run a google search on them and find out the link i don't think the link is here but i have read very interesting papers from from them not just again not just for service but overall business management and uh, and so on now look at uh, you can recall the example lewis gave about her interaction with the shipping business where the customer rep was uh, remembering the name of her and so on and with that context read this how its uh, reps engage in customer relationships but also how they are rewarded or not for nurturing those relationships and for increasing the long term value to the enterprise of particular customers so yes that customer rep which dealt with the uh, lewis was uh, was a good customer rep but what is what is exactly that company uh, what is that with that customer rep how they are thanking them can thank thanking those type of uh, um thanking those type of uh, customer reps how what are the things they are doing so that they can continue with that type of behavior nurturing those relationships and so on becoming a customer value enterprise is difficult so all these things which i have been mentioning although they seem very simple in uh, in talking about but when you are doing it in the real world they are really very difficult and that is why we have these challenges that is why customers are not satisfied because 
companies are it is hard for the companies to even to do these basic things for one reason or another it is a strategy that can never be handled by one particular department within the enterprise quality is a job of everyone everyone in the enterprise managing customer relationships and experiences is an ongoing process one that requires the support and involvement of every functional area in the organization from the upper management through production and finance to each sales representative representative or contract contact center operator everyone should be involved everyone should take responsibility um, like the other example the uh, food place example our one of our friends gave uh, and she spoke about the security guard how the security guard just closed the door locked it without really explaining what is happening until start people started talking talking with him and asking him what what is he trying to do so even that security guard is part of the service which you service relationship which you are going to experience even that security guard who maybe has no direct link with the product or service so the main point is that quality belongs to everyone everyone has to take interest everyone has to get involved if people are if everyone is not involved and everyone don't take responsibility that it is their job to improve customer satisfaction the overall experience will not be good and the customer would not be satisfied and because everyone needs to be involved and it is hard to involve everyone at the same in the same way because everyone is not motivated by the same things and there are so many other issues also that is why sometimes the product is good but the service is not good sometimes service is good and the product is not good sometime you go to the restaurant and the ambiance is good the customer service is good the food is good but the price is not good price is too much sometime price is good but the customer rep is not talking in a nice way because they are thinking that the food is less expensive so a different class is coming to buy that food and they don't give proper respect to that class or whatever different reasons yes this would go back to the concept that everyone is equal but then everyone is not equal but for from a customer rep side they need to treat everyone in the right way but you know we are human beings we although we would like to say that we don't discriminate but we do we look at someone someone's face their how their face look how they how they dress what car they are driving they are living in kingston 5 or kingston 25 <laughs> whatever it is we look at we look at these things these things are so it's quite complex to get uh, get it right five principles they are talking about please look into these things to for overall customer strategy principle 1 principle 2 must be capable the enterprise must be capable before they start offering the services learning relationships we have been talking about it throughout learning relationship what is learning relationship where you are continuously learning about your customer with ev with every touch point with every customer touch point you are gaining some knowledge you are documenting it next time you go to the customer you use that knowledge to your advantage and over a period of time you start giving the customer the customized sales customized products 
and then you generate better revenue and over a, over a period of time you have learned so much about the customer that the customer is not willing to switch because he knows he or she knows that it will take a lot of time for the next company the comp competitor or the next company to gain this much knowledge about you yeah theoretically speaking this is how that happens of course there are so many other reasons why people leave a, a business there are so it can be so many things why someone would leave doing business with some company seamless individual customer dialogue number three number four look at it number five organizational management strategy placing managers in charge of customers and customer relationships rather than of just products and programs this is what needs to be done these are the best practices yeah five principles yeah so one of the principle is that placing i really like this one placing managers in charge of customers and customer relationships rather than of just products or programs and most of the time you would you would see that uh, they have product manager service manager that is fine but you should have specific customers should have specific managers who are dealing with those customers who are spending time in understanding those customers and giving them not just a variety of things so that they can choose from them and they go in the paradox of choice but know them so well that they can give them exactly what they want when they want at what price they want it all of those things as we come to the conclusion of this uh, very exciting chapter number 1 uh, please uh, make note of these lines a customer strategy enterprise seeks to create one centralized view of each customer across all business units every employee who interacts with a customer has to have real time access to customer information about the individual customer so that it is possible to pick up each conversation from where the last one left off each conversation from where the last one left off the goal is instant interactivity with the customer this process can be achieved only through the complete and seamless integration of every enterprise business unit and process yeah and you can now reflect on the examples a couple of friend friends gave and try to link with with this this nice paragraph summary section uh, please pay attention to summary section of all the chapters because for obvious reason they are trying to summarize the pointers but don't just read the summary section please be mindful about this you are reading complete book please enterprises that foster relationships with individual customers pave a path to profitability yeah individual customers they are focusing on the challenge is to understand how to establish these critical relationships and how to optimize them for profits learning relationships provide the framework for understanding how to build customer value yeah so this is how you build customer value custom customer value cannot be built when you have just one time customer and they don't come and you, you are not able to translate uh, uh, you are not able to bring them again and again and every time they leave uh, at least satisfied if not loyal this is food for thought some questions are here in your own time read the questions come up with your answers reflect on them and uh, in the future discussions share your ideas share your thoughts uh, as they come this is a nice section which they have in the in the book uh, sometimes books have glossary 
at the end of the book but i think this is a good practice to have it right uh, at the end of the chapter so uh, they have explained different terminologies for example customer centricity what it is uh, customer equity what it is you might not be familiar with these terms but that is fine these are nothing hard in this you just need to read the definitions and uh, and so on you should be fine but if there is any problem in understanding or something you can always let me let let me know investopedia is a interesting site uh, to look into basic definitions uh, they have covered uh, all the relevant uh, definitions in the glossary section but still if you for even for other courses like finance courses and so on investopedia i think is a good site you can look uh, for the definitions if you want we we were speaking about for example uh, being interactive with the customer interactive marketing and so on the interactive era for example multiple channel marketing uh, these are good uh, concepts to uh, look at and uh, and so on uh, but the most important thing would be uh, to start uh, reading uh, as soon as possible. Prefer prefer preference is that maybe start reading from tonight. Thank you.